Natalia coming out victorious, a disqualification. I always think a bit of a cop out uh, to have a disqualification really any time, but for a women's match, to be honest, I'd prefer to see a definitive outcome. And uh, personally, probably a bit too early, but I was hoping to see uh, you know a belt change hands here. Yeah, uh, me. Well, I don't, I don't, I don't think I was. I don't think I was expecting anything to change, but. Um, yeah, it was a good, solid little match from uh, both. Uh, Natalia was very impressive, I have to say. But uh, Maku, in the end, retains via DQ. And uh, that's probably the best finish for, for a match like that, I think, with everybody concerned. And let them uh, continue uh, their little segments on SmackDown. We go to Rev Jake on Skype. Not much to say about that one, but your thoughts? you just really shouldn't have a disqualification on a pay-per-view you don't get your money's worth that's exactly the point the money's worth and those definitive finishes that we pay for drifter as well you're watching it anything else to add on that well here's the thing um being from canada and of course being a big supporter of the hearts and want to see a new generation of hearts come on up and with the uh, pending breakup of the uh, Hart Dynasty, I really wanted to see her grab that belt. I think she looked good with that belt. I think she can walk on Raw with that belt and dominate the women's division and let them chase after her for a while. I think she got completely robbed. Yeah, it's a great idea to have her being so strong. I saw her in the Battle Royale uh, on Monday uh, with Tamina and again I would actually like to see that one play out uh, again sort of uh, girls that are not the typical stick tin uh, models that we've been accustomed to I mean uh, yeah Natalia certainly one that deserves a push and hopefully at some point in the future we're going to see the belt on her maybe it's going to be a long term program I think Survivor Series is always 5 on 5 diva territory so maybe no belt involved at that one yeah, at least we're down to just one belt for the women's uh, Divas division, you know? I mean, it just tightens it all up. There's plenty of them. And uh, it makes it a bit more exciting and legit that there is one, just one champion. And that is Michelle McCool tonight. So we've been watching uh, Hell in a Cell live and just seen the conclusion of uh, Kane versus The Undertaker. The main event at this pay-per-view, they uh, found a way of getting Paul Bearer into the cell. Kane attacking one of the referees. And indeed, we all saw it coming here earlier in the chat room. Paul Bearer turning on uh, The Undertaker and indeed now firmly supporting Kane it looks like yep yeah, um, Paul Bear opening that urn with the bright light <clears throat> that stunned uh, the Undertaker and um, yep yeah, Bear makes the sidestep with Kane and turns on Taker and uh, Kane with that devastating finisher to retain the World Heavyweight Championship a couple of people predicted it I uh, didn't really know if it was going to happen, but it has. So it looks like this is how it's going. Survivor Series, probably. We're going to see those two guys at it again. Uh, we have uh, callers on Skype. Uh, first of all, Drifter, your reactions to that match? Well, that's uh, some powerful flashlight they got on the go there to take out The Undertaker. <laughs> Very powerful. Uh, are you surprised? not surprised i think uh, they want to keep it going you know like we we're saying earlier uh, paul bear would have to swerve i gotta give paul bear something to do the undertaker certainly doesn't need him anymore like he did at the beginning but kane could certainly use him and run with that for a while absolutely and rev jake uh what an outcome i'm not surprised but i'm disappointed and i'm kind of thinking i remember Paul Barry used to be with Kane a while ago. Drifter and Rev Jake, uh, overall, and we'll get our thoughts then, uh, how would you rate this pay-per-view? We'll go with Drifter first. Well, I miss, uh, I don't know how many matches were before Randy Orton and, and uh, Sheamus, because I missed those, but I heard that Danielson won his uh, match. That's right. Okay, so I, I wish I would have seen that, because that one was probably one of the best ones on the card, no, no doubt. 
And then what came after that? Was it Orton second or was there something before him? Yeah, Orton, Sheamus was second on the card. And, uh, okay, so I saw most of it. Yeah. I gotta say the best part of the pay-per-view was the whole Nexus John Cena thing. Yeah, I tend to agree. I think it was uh, definitely the highlight. Um, definitely more so as well after that Edge match with Jack Swagger. Because when... Yeah, that was kind of a surprise. But the whole John Cena Nexus thing, that was the one I really didn't know which way it was going to go. You know, you can watch a wrestling match and go, yeah, I can see it going this way and probably will go this way. But that one, like, I, I liked the match so much because I didn't honestly know who was going to win. Indeed, it's the surprises that always are the best. Uh, indeed, Rev Jake, overall, your thoughts on this one? A good show? I'd give it a 7 out of 10. It's a lot better than the past couple of ones I've seen. Excellent. Well, with that, guys, it's been a pleasure to have both of you on here. And indeed, I'm sure we'll do it again on another Wrestle Dope, another Sunday night, another pay-per-view. An overall rating for both of us, uh, I would actually uh, think it was medium to good i would also go around seven out of ten uh the matches did deliver and i was quite happy with the placement of the uh, orton versus sheamus match to have that second was uh something to keep the excitement level going and to keep me interested and wanting to stay watching and indeed of course uh, pay-per-view you gotta watch it yeah i think it was good all around um Again, we had the stumbling block with Edge and uh, what's his face? Jack Swagger. Jack Swagger. Um, but, yeah, I mean, the rest of it was cool. I liked the, the US title match. Good start. Sheamus match was good and strong. Um, Divas match was good and strong. Cena Nexus thing was terrific. And a uh, nice little finish and not too obvious. Uh, just Just right at the end so uh, I think the big news this week will be Cena Nexus where do we go from yeah, here I think you've mentioned the high spots in this one and uh, at least there were some high spots there were things that uh, made us all uh, be quite surprised with uh, of course the interference in the Cena match with uh, we believe Husky Harris and possibly Michael McGillicuddy getting involved and in NXT season 2 guys on a pay per view this is booking genius. I mean, let's bring them back from the dead, please. I mean, both Husky and Michael McGillicuddy, they need something. And maybe uh, they're going to be in Nexus tomorrow with Cena.